Hello everyone. Today I will introduce what is aspect-based sentiment analysis. We will take a look at what ABSA outputs look like, followed by a paper walkthrough, and we will end with a Python demo. Let's start with an example. Let's say we have an online review for a restaurant. Waiters are very friendly, but the pasta is simply average. ABSA should be able to output structured data showing the aspect, the opinion, and the sentiment. In this case, waiters are being described as friendly and it's a positive sentiment. In contrast, pasta is being described as average, it's a negative sentiment. As we saw on the previous page, here we have some terminology and jargons. Waiters and pasta are called aspects, also called targets. Friendly and average are subjective opinions. To summarize, ABSA is also called target-based sentiment analysis and opinion mining. Compared to traditional sentiment analysis, ABSA provides more details. For a given product or service, ABSA can extract what aspects are people talking about, do people like or dislike each aspect, and for what reason. Next, let's look at what ABSA outputs should look like. Let's say we scraped all the online reviews for a restaurant. This is a Google review page for a place I really like in Florida. The outputs should look something like this. For instance, people may have mentioned the word food 523 times. Seven people may have said the food tasted weird. Six people may have said the food tasted authentic. 43 said the food was great. 17 said the food was dry and weir correspond to a negative sentiment, authentic, positive, great, positive, and so on. And on the other hand, people may have mentioned the word service 326 times. 34 people may have said the service was slow. 12 may have said the service was fast. Six may have said the servers were rude and 15 um, friendly. They also correspond to different sentiments. If you ended up having too many aspects, you can do clustering and dimension reduction to group similar aspects together. And now that we have a general expectation of what outputs we're looking for, I'm going to do a paper walkthrough so that we can understand the model design and architecture. This paper is called Learning Span Level Interactions for Aspect Sentiment Triplet Extraction. It has two first authors who contributed to the work equally. And their model will output what they call aspect sentiment triplets. For example, we have a consumer review here for a laptop, did not enjoy the new Windows 8 and touchscreen functions. Here, Windows 8 is the aspect and so is touchscreen functions. They were both described by the opinion not enjoy and the sentiment is negative. Here we have the model architecture. First, they break a sentence into tokens. So did not enjoy the new Windows 8. They were broken down into many tokens. And these tokens are then combined to form a span. For example, did, did not enjoy, not enjoy, enjoy the new. And we need to combine these words to form a span because an aspect or an opinion can be a phrase and a phrase can have multiple words. Windows 8 should be read together as one phrase. It wouldn't make sense to break it apart. And the enumeration of span is pretty computational intensive because the number of possible spans grows exponentially as the sentence gets longer. To control the computational complexity, next they did some pruning. Here is a task called aspect term extraction and opinion term extraction. Each span is then classified as either invalid, an opinion, or a target, also called an aspect. And a pruning operation here removes everything that's invalid and only keeps candidate aspects or targets, as well as candidate opinions. And finally, each aspect is paired with each opinion. These target candidate aspects and opinions are coupled together so that we can determine the sentiment relationship between them. Here, the sentiment relation classifier determines whether each aspect opinion pair 
conveys a positive uh, or a negative or a neutral sentiment. It can also be invalid because the new Windows 8 is a fact. It's not a subjective opinion, but rather an objective fact. So there is no sentiment relationship there. And this model has a decent performance, which is significantly improved compared to previous papers. The performance varies depending on the model. In the beginning, they can either do sentence encoding using BY-LSTM or BERT. BERT is a more complex model, so it leads to better performance. They also had four different training and testing sets. Uh, here, REST14 means that it's a data set about restaurant from 2014, and LAP14 means that it's a data set about laptop from 2014. These data sets were originally released by the Semantic Evaluation Workshop. The authors of this paper have made their code publicly available on GitHub, and we can see a Python demo on Google Colab. In the beginning, we need to download and install a number of packages as well as loading the pre-trained model. There are a lot of uh, packages that needed to be downloaded. It took me about four minutes. The next cell shows what the training data looks like. And here specifically, they're showing an example for the 2014 laptop data. And this is what the data looks like. For example, I charge it at night and skip taking the cord with me because of the good battery life. The target word is battery life and its index goes from 16 to 17. And the opinion word is good. Its index goes from 15 to 15. And also this is a, a positive sentiment. And below we can use a pre-trained model for prediction. This is the training example we saw from the paper. Did not enjoy the new Windows 8 and touchscreen functions. At the very end, the output is going to show you a triplet. Um, so here, the target word is Windows 8 and the opinion is not enjoy. The sentiment is negative. This sentence has two aspects, so we also get an output for touchscreen. So the touchscreen functions uh, the opinion is also not enjoy and the sentiment is negative. Now let's try providing a, a new example. Easy to use and set up. No problems after six months. And let's run the cell and see what happens. And after about 48 seconds, we have the output um, here, the target is use, the opinion is that it's easy to use, and the sentiment is positive. So it looks pretty good. And let's try something else. Um, so, so, so this model was trained on laptop data. Let's try something not related to laptop. Let's say the treatment is effective. And I already ran this cell. It ended up not giving us anything. Uh, meaning that it wasn't able to detect any sentiment aspect triplets. So the model is pretty sensitive to the data set it was trained on because it was trained on data f about laptop. It wasn't able to detect, um, it wasn't able to detect anything in the medical domain. But the nice thing is that the notebook also show you how to train a model from scratch using your own labeled training data. Um, they also show you how to evaluate uh, your model F1 score. This is the end of the video. If you learned anything useful today, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for your time and take care.